Warm welcome to this live studio talk show at World Water Week. Welcome to the audience that we have here with us and a heartful welcome to everyone joining us online. I'm delighted to be the host for this session and the topic is we need to act and we need to speed up. And we're going to discuss the possibilities of acting and speeding up and we're going to I really look forward also to listening because Veolia is going to present a very new, uh, the first ecological transformative or transformation bar barometer. Uh, <laughs> I can't even pronounce it, barometer uh, that you conducted that covers more of the half of the world's population. So we're going to find out more of the results and basically also dig in more to what, how can we use the results to drive and more action and also to how can we use public awareness to make sure that we make the right decisions but also that we have the support that we need to make the investments needed. For that, I'm super happy that I have experts uh, with me here today. We have you, Jacopo, Jacopo Di Nicola. Did yeah. I pronounce it right? Uh, it's Jacopo. But yeah, <laughs> it's okay, okay, sorry. I just added something more to it. You're strategic planner in the communication department of Viola's headquarter, exactly. correct? And we have Radhika Fox here with us. You're head of the water portfolio at the United States Environmental, Environmental Protection Agency, correct? Yes. And we also have you, Den Denise Ike. You're senior vice president of marketing, communication and sustainability at Veolia in Latin America. Yeah. Warm welcome Thank to you. all of you. Thank you. Thank you. First, I think well, let's dig into this, uh, the first ecological transformation barometer. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the results and especially the ones that are linked to, to water. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Soledad. Um, I think the, today I would like to share with you the two, two main findings about this barometer. Uh, the first one is that for 67% of people in the world, uh, T uh, doing nothing will cost much more than taking action. What, what did you say? They doing nothing? Doing nothing, yeah. Will How cost many much percent? more. 67 percent. Yeah, it's, it's really important because we often hear that people are not ready. The transition to a sustainable economy will be too complex or too hard. But, but you mean that the, the ones that answer the questions, they think that decision makers are not doing enough? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so the point is that people believe if we act now, we need to act now because if we don't do that, we're going to pay much more in the future. Mm. So, and the second finding, and really interesting, is that the 60% of people don't know how the world will be if we realize this ecological transformation. They don't know where we go. Mm. There is a lack of vision, um, I think, as a company, but also all the stakeholders need to answer to this lack of vision. We need to propose something and the people need to project themselves in the future mm. if you want to build something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I'm so happy that we have you here, Radhika. It's like you're, you're a champion in this, in this segment and you've been doing... A lot of it's like also like you know kind of all of the stakeholders in the in the water segment, but also like listening to to Jack Abbas, both linked to the lack of vision, and also what the actions needed. Can you share like your your perspective and also, but also how you how are you as a leader leading transformation now? Well, thank you so much for this really important topic that, that we're here to talk about. And I have to say, last night I was reading the barometer findings, and it, it's so fascinating, you know, where we are on this issue of climate and, and sustainability. And, and, you know, just reflecting on the last few days, even why this conversation is so important, um, you know, President Biden uh, is actually in Maui uh, today. Uh, after these, you know, really destructive wildfires have, you know, led to loss of human life, ecological life. And so he's there on the ground uh, meeting with families who have been impacted, um, really looking at the federal agency response. And, you know, think about this weekend where all weekend we at EPA have been watching, you know, this um, Hurricane Hillary 
And uh, thankfully, it, it's been downgraded to a tropical um, storm. But you know what we do know is that you know millions of people in Southern California are going to be impacted by flash flooding, um, you know, in a very drought-stricken area. So, yeah. so this notion of action, I think uh, people understand this. This is impacting their daily lives. Yeah. And you know, for uh, the Biden Harris administration, I think you know it has been a top priority for the president to bring climate action back uh, to the United States. I think one of the uh, biggest ways that we have been doing that is through some of the uh, historic investments we're making uh, through the Inflation Reduction Act, really trying to build a clean energy economy from the middle up and the bottom out, uh, as well as the historic resources through the bipartisan infrastructure law, the single largest uh, investment that we're making in water in the United States. Mm. Um, and, and we want to do it in a resilient, sustainable way, really building for the future. Yeah. And it seems like you're you're really both investing and also like making. It, it's also it's called the protection agency. It's yeah. like you're protecting, yeah. but you feel that are you transmitting a clear vision of like what? And do you do you have a vision like what the world will look at if we actually act and speed up the action? It's that's a wonderful question. And yes, I think we have a, a vision for building a better America. I think that also it's a vision that isn't putting the environment against the economy, but actually investing in the environment, investing in our natural resources, actually can build the economy of the future. Um, we can reshore um, uh, domestic manufacturing in this country when we invest in ecology, invest in the environment. We can. Uh, prepare for um, a more uncertain climate future. And so that's the vision, mm. is that it's not an either or, uh, but actually when we invest in our environment, we invest in the future. And is it hard, do you feel like you have, because the, the Barbie and Shore said you actually have the public opinion to do those kind of investments. And, but do you feel it's easy to do that kind of, kind of investment or is it still that you're struggling with like resistance to actually do the investments needed? Well, we're at a moment, a really unique moment, where we have more resources than we ever could have ima imagined wow. uh, in the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, my office alone is investing fifty billion dollars over the um, the next five years in water. So, so it is an incredible moment of of investment, but it's not enough. I think it's mm. a down payment. We know that to ensure the health and well-being of, of all uh, people on this planet, more is going to be needed. And I think that's why we're so excited here to uh, be part of this discussion with Veolia and, and here in, in Stockholm to have that free exchange of ideas. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. Now, to, over to you, Denise. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, also to hear, I would love to hear your comments on the results, but also to link it to the work that Veolia is doing in Latin America, and especially also something that's highlighted in the report is that the need to do things to, for the ones that need it the most, and also to work with equity and inclusion. Yes, um, so I wanted to give you a concrete example to yeah. what it is to bring access access to water. Um, and I'll take you to Latin America, yes, to please. Ecuador. <laughs> yes. um, there were, uh, were there the need for, um, for family housing or long, low income people has brought them outside of Guayaquil to this ir um, their irregular settlements um, where the people live in extreme poverty. So poverty, extreme poverty, they have very uh, low access to goods, services, no access to public service. The biggest thing being the acts, they have a uh, lack of drinking water. So um, the water gets delivered to them by Tanker, independent tanker trucks, um, no quality insurance. So what um, Violi under um, partnership with EMAPAC, who's the regulator, um, they took on the challenge of bringing um, an innovative, and efficient, and sociable uh, solution to, to, to the Monte Sinai, which is this village with 160,000 um, residents um, that live there. And, uh, but the key to all this was uh, collaboration. So we don't do it alone, you know, it really was a collaborative effort uh, with the regulator, with the residents and local um, le community leaders, with the city of Guayaquil and with Veolia. And we really was uh, 
a, a new initiative to get water um, to these people with, you know, with really with four objectives. Yeah. Uh, what you had, you know, you had to, the cost of water, um, basically for a 55 gallon water, they were paying a dollar to $2.50 $2 under on the rainy season. And so, um, it's in, then they didn't have access to what, what we did as we, um, you know, put together a, a plan where we offered a flat rate. So it's a, we lower the cost. Um, the objective was to lower the cost by a minimum of 25% to design this innovative, uh, efficient what solution. The, yeah. What are the results? Um, the result is we were able, now the project has been up and running um, for five years. Yeah, it was November 20, 2018. And yeah, we were able to lower a flat rate of 75 cents and we've you know, kept it uh, ever since. We also, the most important pa part is that we ensured the potable water quality, drinking mm. water, because these tankers, what they were doing, um, some of them is taking water out of the river when they weren't ensuring quality. So with this collaboration between the city, um, the regulator, um, and Veolia, we built a um, infrastructure, we built an a, a intake plant, yeah. and we're using that and through an efficient system, delivery system, mm. uh, we're able to get access to I water to these people on a daily basis where before oh, they did yeah. not have it. And when you say like lowering the cost, it feels like, okay, where, who, who pays for it? Who pays for that transition? And where do we, like, where did the money comes from to make water more accessible? That's where, uh, you know, that's where we, we have to um, collaborate. So that's where, you know, public, private uh, collaboration, because so actually we, you know, the resources were limited. So we had to find models um, that work in order to construct this, this water plant. Mm. And, uh, and it's an initiative, so it, it's a break even point, you know, for Veolia because you know, we're doing, we're doing this, um, Are you terms scaling of it up? um, in terms of like we're servicing to, the 160,000 people in yeah, the community, right? Yeah. But are you planning on like taking it to other parts of the world, or, like scaling it up? In, um, because it seems like it's something that can be doable with adjustments in other parts of the world It could be too. copy and adaptable. It definitely has to, you have to take into consideration the local you know, the, the local situation, but it, it is a model that could be replicable. We call it copy and adapt. So mm. it could be taken to, uh, in fact, it's being looked at other cities uh, in Ecuador, and it could also be taken to other cities in Latin America. Mm. Nice, thank you. Do you have any, now listening to what it's being done, do you have any things other, like from the report, there will be, yeah, but the citizens also uh, I like think highlight. Uh, as we said, I think the, the, main, the most important thing is that people need a new narrative to, to strengthen this, this solution-oriented ecology. Because mm -hmm. people need to accept this solution, not just accept it, need to desire well, well, the world we're going to build. Because we need the opinion public support to do it mm -hmm. in each country. So. I think the most important thing for, for politics or company and all stakeholders is to create a dialogue between uh, op public opinion, citizens, etc., to build this new narrative, um, can show us how to do things and why. So we need to highlight, for example, the benefits of the transition in terms of health, in terms of quality of life, or social justice, because it's just not a question of cost. It's, a, it's also a question of benefits. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the most important thing. Yeah, Radhika. I, I, I could not agree more on this mm -hmm. issue of the narrative. Um, and what I've really seen is that we have to think about that narrative at every level, right? We have to talk about it, about climate and, and, and this environmental um, you know, investments that we're trying to make. We have to talk about it as a kitchen table issue, right? If, if people are thinking about climate change or how I'm gonna you know, feed my family, mm -hmm. it's never gonna win. So we have to tie this at, at the most foundational level to how 
the investments we're talking about, the technology solutions we're talking about really are benefiting people's lives on a daily basis. But then we also have to be able to make the case, as you said, in a political context, right, where we're making choices between investment in the environment and investment in all exactly. other kinds of things, right? Yeah. Um, and so that narrative, we've got to get more sophisticated about understanding the audience, what motivates them, and then really taking important data like we have in Barometer and mm -hmm. translating that. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it also sounds to me like it's important to do it inclusively yes. and together with, because otherwise it's still also like, many feel like the decisions maker over here and we're here, we don't know how the solutions look like. But also like you were highlighting the importance of like cross-sexual collaboration or like co doing this together. Uh, was it was it challenging? And, and also like in, in the collaboration, what, what allowed it or facilitated for you to work together and drive this transformation forward? I think that kind of the, the key, I would say three takeaways uh, from this. I think um, the fact that it was an impactful initiative, I mean, impactful, collaborative, and I'd say innovative, impactful. I mean, we're talking, we're changing people's lives, you know, by bringing them access to water. Um, collaborative because we're looking at all of our stakeholders. You know, we're looking at the residents themselves, but we're also, it has to be also be good for government, for the city, for the operator. So it has to, and, and this key is key because it allowed, like in our case, the project was built up and running within months because it was, you know, it, it benefits everyone. It was quickly approved, implemented, constructed, and put into action. Um, and then from an innovation perspective, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, important think outside the box you mm -hmm. know sometimes we don't have all the resources you got to come up and think outside the box and see a model that works for for everyone and not to mention in this case we had also um, technology other things because at the end of the of the day we had to make this efficient for mm -hmm. the tankers that were delivering because yeah. we were lowering the cost so we had to make the routes with technology to make the routes give them a map so that because we increased the capacity by 50 percent in the delivery system so mm. Um, even though we lower the cost, you know, these, these independent business owners, yeah. ha it had to work for all stakeholders. I'm so I think okay. um, it's pretty key. Yeah, it is. Time is running up. We only have, this is like a short session. So I'm like, <laughs> and I would just, I, which is good that many of us get curious to know more. And I think both at Veolia's webpage, we can find the, the barometer. Yeah. We can also read more about at your work, uh, not at Veolia's page, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <But> <laughs> at your agency, but also to try to, to tie this dialogue up and also like linking back to, to the need to act and spit up and the changing the narrative. What would you say also if you also like try to share a vision or not a, for, the, for the future? How do you see that innovations and action what is the future you envision in like 10 years? You won't prepare for this <laughs> question, so I'm just oh. like. <laughs> yeah, Jacobo, do you want to? Um, I think it's a, it's a long term project, so we need uh, everyone's support. Uh, but to do that, we, we need to understand that there are, there, there are obstacles. Uh, so, of course, we have the solution, there are the solutions we need to find. But we need to understand the obstacle. That's why we did the survey. And we need to adapt each solution to each social context, cultural context. Mm. If, we, if we achieve to do that, I think we have a good chance to, to realize this, this transition. OK, thank you. So, um, you know, we're in Stockholm, uh, <laughs> and, River, and um, you know, the theme is really a water-wise world, right? So I think my vision for 10 years from now is that we will have pushed past this, this sort of either-or thinking, right? It's water for cities, or it's water for agriculture, it's for fish, or it's for farmers. Um, it's about growing the economy, or it's about protecting the planet that we have pushed past those silos and that through the just the amount, tremendous amount of technology innovation that's happening right now, the historic investments that uh, many nations are making in their water, that, that we will have uh, built a new paradigm, right? That integrates all of those concepts and moves, our, uh, moves the, the planet forward. 
Wow, thank you. Denise, shortly, yes. because time is running out. Yes, so I, I think in urban water management, um, the last mile when it comes to technology and social um, is the toughest. And we certainly, you know, Violia might have, you know, the technology, the know-how, uh, the experience, but we can't do it alone. So my vision is collaboration. I think, and it, it's a call to action, you know, for, for stakeholders to work together, for government, for private entities, for all to work together for, yeah. for a wiser water world. Yeah, thank you so much, all Thank of you, you for this beautiful dialogue. Thank you for having me.